This is our Heimer Axion in sandstone pearl, they call it, though I call it metallic mud. From the front, you can see it looks like most other modern camper vans. But from the side, it just kind of stops. Which means it is the only RV, full RV, you can buy in production in North America that you can park in our condo complex's parking lot or in most normal parking spaces. It's built on a Dodge Ram Promaster chassis, so the cab part is like any other Dodge Ram Promaster except for the swivel seats. But then when you go inside, it looks like that. Someone over six feet tall can stand up straight in this. Let's turn the lights on. Oh, have to turn the juice on. This is LED rope lights. And there's also LED touch lights. Two burner propane stove. Sink with hot running water. Four-inch TV with a DVD Blu-ray player, all running on 12 volt. You can see um, this is the couch, which converts into a bed. Take a look at the Norcold refrigerator. This is a, an all-electric refrigerator with a freezer compartment. And over it is a pull-out work surface for the kitchen. With this, there's enough space for a lot of meal prep. Then in back here is the full toilet complete with a macerator. This flips down for your sink and then this pulls out for your shower. Complete with a full curtain that goes around it. This is your wardrobe. It's not long enough for any normal size shirt unless you just wear cutoffs. But it is a wardrobe. And then there are drawers here. It's where we keep the, some of the heavier stuff. And then 110 volt microwave and another shelf space beside it. Above this you can see the AC powered air conditioner. We added that padded thing to stand on for cooking. This is a table that pulls out when I don't have the bungee cord in the way.
funky cord is because the drawers fly open when we go around corners. This is a computer workstation complete with a 110 volt AC outlet here. Folds down easily if you have two hands available. Then the uh, the two seats swivel around to form a nice sort of entertainment area. This funny little space up here is so wide and deep we can actually keep all our bedding inside it, which makes it pretty handy for making the bed at night. Each window comes complete with an ability, I mean the two side windows. Uh, <laughs> really hard to open. I'm gonna have to put this down and use both hands. See if I can actually get it to come open. Well, it's certainly not going to come open by mis by accident. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so it opens like this and then there's a bug screen that opens up here. And then at night, when you close this, there is a blackout curtain that shuts on it. And then this sliding door has a similar opening window, same thing. So you get cross ventilation even with that door shut. For the rear, we put on this cargo tray from Walmart because <clears throat> the Axion doesn't have a lot of storage space. That's the price you pay for having a vehicle this short. But this folds down easily enough. A lot of these things are two-handed jobs. <sighs> So with this folded down, the rear door is open. And they fold around all the way, which is very handy. There you can see the table, one of the two tables. There's the other one that go up in front on those two bases you see on the floor. The rear windows have a blackout curtain too. Those are the bases for the two tables, and then that, of course, is for opening the awning. So even with the cargo bay here, you can walk right up into the back of the van, see the toilet and everything else. The awning opens with this thing standard manual awning fits into that and then you open it with this which I can't show with one hand on the roof I don't know if I can aim this camera up high enough to show you but on the roof there is a antenna for the TV I'm going to just hold up this camera and see if we can show you what else is up there. Uh, can you see that in front of the AC there is our 200 watt solar panels which keep this thing nicely juiced up when, we, when we're just not letting it sit here. See, oh yeah, the things on the side. The wastewater, well, and, uh, you put fresh water in it here. Let's 
see that in the door jam. And it really tends not to spill, strangely enough. Fuel goes in there. And then that's where you put in your fresh water if you've got full hookups. And this is where you get the juice. And you'll see from that that it's a standard RV Park 30 amp receptacle. The vehicle came with an adapter to 110 volt. Then to get rid of the wastewater, you lift this up and then use a little bungee cord to attach it to the furnace vent over there. There is the handle you pull, do you see that? To get rid of the wastewater. You open that to get the uh, get access to the drain hose and use the drain. So to dump it, you open that, get the drain out, put it in the receptacle for the dumpster, and then you push this macerator button to get it started and have your spouse pour water down the toilet to make sure you flush the pipe out. Then on the other side, you can see the plumbing for the propane is all here. Now you use your propane, not for the fridge, it's not propane, but just for the stove and optionally for the furnace and hot water heater. However, if you don't want to um, run those on gas, you can run them on, on electricity more efficiently. So you can, and you can also set it to run on both and just have it sort of figure out for itself which way it wants to go. When you make the bed at night, this is what I'm doing now, you've got to, of course, put all these pads somewhere, especially this big one. I generally put them in the toilet, and if the back door wasn't open, it would be actually a little easier. There we go. Actually bracing it with the side of the camera. Okay, then you get this little thing that keeps it from sliding, although I don't know if we need that. Then you have to sort of haul up this panel, which is slightly hard. If you see how I'm pulling that out, and then I'm letting it drop down here. So, there's your where your bed goes. I'm going to back up a little bit. The apertures are so the furnace will work. Otherwise you're going to be out of furnace. So then you put these down on top of it. There we go. The instructions say to put the little pads on the inside and the big pad on the outside. I'm going to... There. And then these go down here. Well, normally they go down on the inside, but you're just going to have to do without that for this demonstration just to see what the bed is like when it's fully deployed. And when it is fully deployed, of course what you'll see is that unlike a bigger RV, though you have a bed and a bathroom and a kitchen and a living room, just like the biggest RVs have in this, it's all the same room. So when you've got your bed made, you're not going to be doing anything else in here. Okay, there it is with the bed made. See, I'll get in front and give you maybe a better view of it. There we go. Now that's a full-size bed. 
measuring roughly 47 inches by 74 inches. So my spouse, who's much shorter than me, always sleeps on the inside because that has those two boundaries. And I sleep on this side, so if my feet stick out a little bit, they can. And I showed you, I think, what these shelves look like. We found we could get some standard size bins from a hardware store, Walmart, or whatnot that fit nicely in that space and keep some of our dining stuff in there. And then we've got the mop for dusting the solar panels, which you have to do periodically, and the extended windshield washer thingy, because the ones supplied by the gas stations aren't long enough to reach that humongous truck windshield we've got. Then these things lock when you do that. Too bad the drawers don't lock like that, then they wouldn't slide out when you're moving. Now, if I put this camera down somewhere, I can actually show you what it's like to put the awning out. Let's see. There we go. Okay, this is just a... Uh, 